Hello students, a very warm welcome to all of you. In today's chemistry class, the topic is covalent bond from chapter 2 that is chemical bonding. Before starting today's topic, let us recap. Why do atoms form chemical bonds? Atoms make bonds in order to get stable by having 8 electrons in their outer shell or 2 electrons if they have only one shell. Can you define ionic bond? Ionic bond is formed between a metal and a non-metal by the transfer of electrons. Example of ionic compounds are sodium chloride, magnesium chloride and calcium oxide. Which is the most or the strongest ionic compound? It is cesium fluoride which is the most electropositive element? Cesium. Which is the most electronegative element? It's fluorine. Good. Now let's begin our today's topic. If one person has a bat and the other person has a ball, can they play cricket alone? No, only when they decide to share the bat and ball. Only then they can play cricket. Similar is the case with some atoms. Sometimes they like to share their electrons and form chemical bonds. Such type of chemical bonds are known as covalent bond. Covalent bond. The important facts about it is that they are formed between the non-metals and they involve the sharing of electrons. So what are non-metals? Those atoms which have a tendency to gain electrons means these atoms must be having 5 valence electrons or 6 or 7 valence electrons. 5 valence electrons, 6 valence electrons, or 7 valence electrons. Except carbon. Carbon has 4 valence electron and hydrogen which has 1 valence electron. So, why non-metals have a tendency to gain electrons to get stability? Why can't they just lose their valence electrons and become stable? The reason is, the non-metals have high electronegativities than the metals. And what is electronegativity? It is the tendency of atom to attract the shared electron pair towards itself. So, gaining of 3 valence electrons, 2 valence electrons or 1 valence electron in the outermost shell to complete the octet will be easier than the removal of 5 valence electrons, 6 valence electrons or the 7 valence electrons. Can you define chemical bond? The chemical bond is formed between two combining atoms by mutual sharing of one or more pair of electrons is called a covalent bond. This is also known as a molecular bond because molecules are formed, not the ions. And the molecule formed due to the sharing of electrons is called the covalent molecule. The easier definition is Whenever a non-metal combines with another non-metal to attain the stable electronic configuration, the sharing of electrons takes place between their atoms and a covalent bond is formed. Example, hydrogen molecule, hydrogen chloride molecule, water molecule, etc. Now let us understand the formation of hydrogen molecule. Hydrogen molecule is composed of two hydrogen atoms and hence it is written as H2. Okay, And this is the electron dot structure of the formation of the hydrogen molecule. It is in your course. The atomic number of hydrogen is 1. So its electronic configuration is 1 in K shell. Hydrogen atom has only one electron in the outermost shell and is not a stable arrangement of electrons. A stable arrangement is to have two electrons in the K shell because then only it will achieve helium inert gas electronic configuration. Thus, a hydrogen atom needs one more electron to become stable 
it gets this electron by sharing with another hydrogen atom. So, two hydrogen atoms share one electron each to form a hydrogen molecule. Thus, in hydrogen molecule, two hydrogen atoms share one electron pair. And hence, the hydrogen molecule is stable. Types of covalent bonds, depending on the number of electrons being shared by two combining atoms, a covalent bond may be single covalent bond, double covalent bond or a triple covalent bond. Let's begin with the first one, single covalent bond. A single covalent bond is formed by the sharing of one pair of electrons between the two atoms and each atom contributing one electron. It is represented by a single dash between the two atoms. Now, one pair of electrons means two electrons. So, we can also say that a single covalent bond is formed by sharing of two electrons between the combining atoms, each atom contributing one electron for sharing. For example, hydrogen molecule. The two hydrogen atoms share one electron each to form a hydrogen molecule. Chlorine molecule. Two chlorine atoms share one chlorine electron each to form a chlorine molecule. Hydrogen chloride molecule, hydrogen atom and chlorine atom share one electron each and form a single covalent bond of the HCl molecule. In water, one atom of oxygen shares with two valence electrons with the two hydrogen atoms to form how many single bonds? One and two. Two single bonds will be formed in the water molecule. In ammonia, one atom of the nitrogen shares it three valence electrons with the three hydrogen atoms and it forms how many single bonds? One, two and three. Three single bonds. In methane, one carbon atom having four valence electrons and shares it with four hydrogen atoms. So it forms how many bonds? One, two, three, four single bonds in the methane molecule. In the carbon tetrachloride, the carbon atom shares its four valence electrons with four chlorine atoms and hence it forms four single covalent bonds in carbon tetrachloride molecule. Second bond is a double covalent bond. It's a bond which is formed by sharing of two pairs of electrons between two atoms. Since two pair of electrons means four electrons. We can also say that a double covalent bond is formed by sharing of four electrons between two atoms. Each atom contributing two electrons for sharing. A double bond is actually a combination of two single bonds. So, it is represented by putting two short lines in, in between the two combining atoms. Formation of oxygen molecule. The atomic number of oxygen is 8. So, its electronic configuration is 2, 6. Each oxygen atom requires two electrons to complete the inert gas electronic configuration. The oxygen atom gets these electrons by sharing its two electrons with the two electrons of the other oxygen atom. So, two oxygen atoms, they share two electrons each and form a stable oxygen molecule. Now, this can be represented by a double bond in between the two oxygen atoms. Formation of carbon dioxide molecule. Carbon has a four valence electrons and oxygen atom has six valence electrons one carbon atom shares its four valence electrons with the two oxygen atoms and forms a carbon dioxide molecule. Please note that there are two double bonds in the carbon dioxide molecule. The carbon atom is in the middle of the molecule and the two oxygen atoms are held by the two double bonds, one on each side of the carbon atom. Third is triple covalent bond. The triple covalent bond is the bond formed by the sharing of three pairs of electrons between two atoms. Since three pairs of electrons are equal to 
six electrons. So we can say a triple bond is formed by sharing six electrons between two atoms, each atom contributing three electrons for sharing. For example, nitrogen molecule. Nitrogen contains a triple bond. So it is written as N triple bond N. The other examples where there is combination of single bond as well as double bond or a triple bond. For example, ethene. Ethene is written as C2H4. Now, in this we have one carbon-carbon double bond and four carbon-hydrogen single bonds. In ethene, ethene formula is C2H2. We have one carbon-carbon triple bond and two carbon-hydrogen single bonds. Covalency. The covalency of an atom is the number of its electrons taking part in the formation of shared pairs. We can also say that the valency of an element in a covalent compound is called its covalency. For example, the covalency of hydrogen is 1 in hydrogen molecule. Because one valence electron from one hydrogen atom contributes in the formation of a pair of electron in the hydrogen molecule. The covalency of oxygen is 2 in the oxygen molecule because two valence electrons from one oxygen atom contributes in the formation of two pairs of electrons. The nitrogen has a covalency of 3 because three valence electrons from one nitrogen atom contributes in the formation of three pairs of electron in the nitrogen molecule and carbon covalency is 4. The two types of covalent compounds are non-polar covalent compounds and the polar covalent compounds. Students, we have already studied the topic that is covalent compounds in class 9. Now it is just recalling all the topics related to this bond. So what do you remember about non-polar covalent compounds? The covalent compounds which are formed between the two similar atoms or they can be in the dissimilar atoms but with a very little electronegative differences. The shared pair of electrons are at equal distance between the two atoms or the shared pair of electrons are equally distributed. For example, hydrogen molecule, chlorine molecule, oxygen molecule, etc. In the case of the hydrogen molecule, two hydrogen atoms are there. The bonding electron pair is at the center and equally shared between the two hydrogen atoms. The bonding electron pair is at equal distance between the nuclei of the two linked hydrogen atoms. The equal sharing of electron pair is because that both the linked hydrogen atoms they have the same electronegativity or zero electronegativity difference. It is because of this equal sharing of the electron pair that the resultant covalent bond has no charge on it, neither positive charge nor negative. Hence, the molecule will be symmetrical and electrically neutral, no charge on it. And they do not give ions in water. So, you can say the non-polar covalent compounds are not showing ionic characters. There are few covalent compounds which are made up of dissimilar atoms then also showing the non-polar nature. Why are they showing non-polar nature? It is because their electronegativity difference is very little and their structure permits the shared pair of electrons to attract equally the linked atoms and thus the molecule becomes symmetrical. For example, in the case of methane 
and carbon tetrachloride though they are made up of dissimilar atoms but they are non polar covalent compounds because the electronegativity in the case of the carbon and hydrogen in the methane molecule carbon is 2.5 and hydrogen 2.1 their electronegativities that is somewhat very near to each other so the shared electron pair in methane are at equal distance from the carbon and the hydrogen atoms and thus they are non polar covalent compounds students what are polar covalent compounds the polar covalent compounds are between the two dissimilar atoms which have a large electronegativity differences between them therefore the shared pair of electrons are not at the equal distances they develop fractional or partial positive charge and partial negative charges hence the molecule is not symmetrical they are asymmetrical and because of these partial charges negative and positive they form ions in water for example water molecule ammonia molecule hydro hydrogen chloride molecule these all are formed of different atoms and their electronegativities are also very large so what is ionization it is a process by which the covalent compounds are converted into ions is known as ionization since a polar covalent molecule has both positive as well as negative poles it is called as dipole molecule so a dipole molecule is a molecule having slight positive and slight negative charge on it let us understand with the help of an example of hcl in hydrogen chloride the strong nuclear charge of the chlorine atom the electronegativity of the chlorine is 3 attracts the shared electron pair towards itself that is negative charge shifts towards the chlorine atom thereby develop a slight negative charge the hydrogen atom whose electronegativity is 2.1 develops a slight positive charge therefore a polar covalent molecule is formed means two poles are there in the covalent molecule two poles are one is positive pole and one is negative pole here are the examples of polar covalent compounds first is hydrogen chloride having partial positive charge and partial negative charge the electron pair is shifted towards the more electronegative atom next is water molecule in the water molecule it contains two oh covalent bond and the electronegativities of hydrogen is 2.1 and oxygen is 3.5 that's why oxygen is showing partial negative charge and hydrogen partial positive charge ammonia molecule has 3 nh bond and the electronegativities of hydrogen is 2.1 and nitrogen is 3 hence the shared electron pair is shifted towards the more electronegative atom that is the nitrogen and giving it partial negative charge the last is hydrogen fluoride molecule over here the shared electron pair is shifted towards the fluorine and fluorine is having partial negative charge and hydrogen partial positive charge here the electronegativities of hydrogen is 2.1 and fluorine is 4 note here the first one the more the electronegativity difference between the two combining atoms the more is the polar nature of the covalent molecule the bond formed between the two atoms 
with the same electronegativity will be non-polar. No poles will be there, no positive, no negative. With slightly different electronegativities, the molecule will become a polar molecule because they will get slightly positive and slight negative charged atoms. With much electronegativity difference, it will become ionic because if you remember the difference between metal and a non-metal, if the electronegativity difference is very high, then it becomes ionic bond. Such polar covalent molecules which have both negative and positive poles, it is known as a dipole molecule. Please remember, so water molecule, ammonia molecule, hydrogen fluoride molecule, hydrogen chloride molecule, these are the dipole molecules because of their positive and negative poles. Conditions for the formation of covalent bond. First condition, both atoms should have four or more electrons in their outermost shells that is they should be non-metals so that both the atoms achieve the stable octet by sharing four three two or one electron pair the non-metals of group 4a 5a 6a and 7a respectively satisfy this condition now there are few exceptions like hydrogen coming in group 1a but it forms covalent bonds with the non-metals of group 4a to 7a. Beryllium, boron, aluminium, they all form covalent bonds with the non-metals. Second point is both the atoms should have high electronegativity because electronegativity is the tendency of the atom to attract the shared electron pairs towards themselves. Hence, it favors the formation of covalent compounds. Third, both the atoms should have high electron affinity. It should have high tendency to accept the electrons. Both the atoms should have high ionization energy. The atoms which have high value of ionization energy are not capable of losing electrons to form cations. Thus, these elements cannot form ionic bonds. Rather, due to their high ionization energy, they can form covalent bonds between them. The last point, the electronegativity difference between the combining atoms should be zero or negligible. Both the atoms should have equal electronegativity so that the transfer of electron or electrons from one atom to the other may not take place. That is, ionic bond may not be formed when the electronegativity of the both atoms is equal, sharing of electron pair occurs and covalent bond is established. Now let's see the chlorides and oxides of the elements from group 1 to group 7 of period 3rd. As we go from left to right, that is from the metals towards the non-metals, the electrovalent or the ionic character decreases and this ionic, because of the ionic characters, these chlorides and the oxides, they are crystalline solids and from group 4 to group 7, they are having the covalent nature. Exception is aluminium, aluminium chloride partially ionic, partially covalent solid it is. Students, here are a few covalent molecules which are listed non-polar and polar covalent molecules. These all are in your course for class 10th. Uh, we have already started these structures of the covalent molecules in class 9th also. Here, let's revise few examples of covalent molecules and few examples I will give you as an assignment after this lecture. For class 10th, please remember that you have to learn electron dot structures for these covalent molecules. Now, let us start the formation of water molecule. Water molecule is a polar covalent molecule. Please remember for electron dot structure, 
you need to draw the atoms before combination the atoms which are involved and the molecule which have been formed after the combination so you have to draw the electron dot structures for both before combination the atoms involved as well as after combination the molecule which has been formed so let's start the water molecule formation the formation of water molecule involves hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen atomic number 1 so electronic configuration is 1 so it needs one more electron to achieve stable duplet configuration of the nearest gas that is helium so you can see here hydrogen atom with one valence electron the oxygen atom has six electrons in its outermost shell why it has six electrons because its electronic configuration is 2 6 and atomic number is 8 so it tries to take two electrons to complete the stable octet configuration of the nearest inert gas that is neon so one atom of oxygen shares its two electrons with two hydrogen atoms to form a water molecule we have already studied how to make the electron dot structures so how many valence electrons now oxygen is having after combination 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so in oxygen octet configuration is complete and hydrogen will be having 1 2 duplet configuration and hence this molecule is a stable molecule so how many single covalent bonds are there one and two two single covalent bonds are formed so one molecule of water contains a total of three atoms hydrogen two and oxygen one one atom of oxygen shares its two electrons with the two hydrogen atoms to form a water molecule let us revise the second example formation of a ammonia molecule ammonia molecule is also a polar covalent molecule atoms involved are nitrogen and hydrogen nitrogen has how many valence electrons 1 2 3 4 5 so five valence electrons surrounding the nitrogen symbol for the electron dot structure it needs how many electrons to complete the eight electrons in its outermost shell or to attain the nearest noble gas that is neon configuration 28 nitrogen requires three more electrons to get into 28 state the hydrogen atom has how many electrons only one electron in the outermost shell so how many electrons does it require to complete the duplet configuration that is of the helium it requires one more electron to attain the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas nitrogen needs three electrons and hydrogen needs one electron when a molecule of ammonia is formed one atom of nitrogen shares three of its electrons with three atoms of the hydrogen can you see the diagram after combination one shared pair of electron which each hydrogen atom so hydrogen is having one two duplet configuration it's stable had this hydrogen second hydrogen two electrons and duplet complete third hydrogen two electrons and duplet complete what about the nitrogen how many valence electrons now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and hence nitrogen has a stable octet configuration now so how many covalent bonds are there single covalent bonds 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 the ammonium molecule contains a total of four atoms 1 2 3 4 1 one atom of nitrogen and three atoms of hydrogen so 
one atom of nitrogen shares at three valence electrons with three hydrogen atoms and form the ammonia molecule. Please note that the nitrogen atom in the ammonia molecule has one unshared pair of electrons on it. This pair of electrons has not been utilized in the chemical bonding. But you need to show in the structure. Students, let us revise the third example that is the formation of carbon tetrachloride molecule. This carbon tetrachloride molecule is a non-polar covalent molecule. It is a symmetrical molecule. So, it contains carbon as well as the chlorine atoms. Carbon having the atomic number 6, its electronic configuration is 2,4. So, how many electrons does it require to complete the octet configuration of nearest noble gas that is neon? It requires 4 more electrons. So, before the combination, the carbon will be having the 4 valence electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? Now, chlorine atom. Chlorine atom has atomic number 17 with electronic configuration 287. Now, how many electrons does it require to complete its octet? It requires one more to get into a uh, octet configuration of the nearest noble gas that is the argon. Right? So, chlorine atom will be showing how many valence electrons? 7 before combination. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. To attain the stable electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas, carbon needs 4 electrons and chlorine needs 1 electron. So, when a molecule of carbon tetrachloride is formed, one atom of the carbon shares 4 valence electrons of its own to 4 atoms of the chlorine. So, after the combination, the chlorine will be having now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons. So every chlorine atom will be having the 8 electrons in the outermost shell and the carbon after the combination will be having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 electronic configuration uh, before the. So after combination. Carbon atom in carbon tetrachloride molecule has 8 electrons in its valence shell. 4 valence electrons of its own and 4 of the chlorine atoms. The electronic configuration of the carbon in the carbon tetrachloride molecule resembles its nearest inert gas that is neon. And each chlorine atom in carbon tetrachloride molecule has 8 electrons in its outermost shell, 7 of its own and 1 shared pair 